I literally had just gotten there from, I was down in Shanville playing darts, seen a, a couple that I graduated with, I seen his car there, thought, well, I'll come home, and I got home, and I thought, well, I'll just walk down to Zap. I hardly ever his car, on Zaps. Your husband's? Yeah. Okay. So we, he that came car. home, and I was like, well, Kelly Harris and his wife Michelle are down there, so I'll just go down, see what's up, say hi. And I literally walked in, I ordered a beer from the bartender, and I walked outside to see if there was anybody out there that I knew. In I, On the patio? Yeah, where the car came through at. Um, I set my purse down on, on the, the chair. Out there? No, on at the bar. Okay. Where he hit, here's, here's the bar, here's the corner. I set my purse right here. And she set my beer on the corner of the bar. I walked in and went to the bathroom. And I said to Kelly, I said, we'll catch up when I come back out, maybe do a shot. And he's like, all right, sounds good. And I no sooner got into the bathroom, and I heard this. And when I came out, the bartender was standing on the bar talking to the police. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And I look over, I mean, and Kelly, the guy that I graduated with, Kelly Harris, he had jumped out of his chair and went over and was performing CPR on Andy. Addinger. Um, and I, he, he, he's it, the one that was pinned between the car yeah. and the bar. Yeah. Um, and the police were there? They weren't there yet. The girl was on the phone calling. Because that's what I was oh. going to tell her. I mean, I didn't know who she was talking to on the phone. And I said, um, who are you talking to? And she said, I'm talking to the police. I said, okay, my phone is in my purse. I just wanted to make someone, make sure someone had called. Living where I live, you're accustomed to hearing loud noises or something happens, and the first thing you do is grab the phone and call 911 to make sure everybody's okay. Yeah. Um, but when I seen Kelly performing CPR, it was it was horrific. I mean, this poor kid was just, you know, he was standing there talking with, with people and... His back from it all, I assume. Yes, because... We, we're, do you know the, if anybody was on the... On the patio at that time? Not that I know of. Um, but it was just bizarre because we literally, I literally walked in the door, walked out, and came right back in. And because there was no one out there that I knew. There was not really, there was, I remember one guy standing all the way over to the far side. Luckily, he was over to the far side because where the majority of people stand is right there outside the door that goes out into the little beer garden. Yeah. Which is where the guy came through. I remembered seeing on the news, they said that he had gotten out of the car and started fighting people. And I don't remember that. I remember standing there while they were working on Andy and seeing the guy that drove the car was still in the car. So, I mean, I don't remember the driver ever getting out of the car. Um... And just being as close to it as I, I mean, I got home and the next day I went to get my wallet out. And I mean, I had piles of glass in my purse. Um, and I can't imagine hitting that hard how he didn't, he, he, I don't know if he was beat up. I don't remember anybody going to the car and beating him up, but I would say he probably got a lot of cuts and stuff on him. Just from the glass, from and the, the windshield, and, and the and the doors coming okay. through. Okay, I saw all the glass on the floor. Oh yeah, I have a picture. And I assume I assume yeah, and I saw the photo of your purse. Yeah, yeah. I assume the glass was a window or something. There was, I mean, obviously so, the windshield in his car was shattered. The passenger or the driver's side was shattered, and there was like a panel where where the, you walk out into the beer garden. There was a, a glass door there, so that was shattered. So, I mean, yeah, I, and then, I mean, luckily the bar was there to stop the car. Otherwise, it, it would have came all the way through into the bathroom, which is where I was at. Um, but I don't re recall him ever getting out of the car. And you stayed inside? Oh, yes. For um, I stayed inside. The... Well, I went out because my husband started hearing all the sirens and stuff. So I called him and I said, yeah. honey, I need you to come down here and get me. And he's like, why aren't you walking now? I said, no, you'll understand as soon as you turn the corner. Um, but so, yeah, I stood there. So you weren't hurt. 
No, I just had a few, yeah, just a few cuts on me. From? Just from glass that, you know, was there. But it couldn't have, you're talking about going home, you were probably pretty shaken. Oh, I was, yeah, I was crying. I just, I was told that there was, because people were still kind of in an uproar. Because of um, the earlier yeah, fight, because, or because of the re- because of the he... uh, because of the fight. Um, so when you got there, they were oh yeah, that. it just it had just happened. Oh, okay. Um, and you know, I I tended bar for years. You don't ever like to throw somebody out, but when they're causing problems, you have to, you know. And I mean, I was told there was a fight, and everybody was kind of talking about it amongst themselves, not knowing that the person was still around. And then all of a sudden, this happens. I mean, I was there less than five minutes before okay. all of this happened. So the chief, uh, the chief said he didn't know anything about the earlier fight, right. if there was one. But that's part of what they're checking. Yes. And also to see if the driver su- suffered injuries from people going after him afterwards. See, so. and I don't, I don't yeah. remember. I don't, I don't think okay. so because where the car came through, he was pinned in there. So if he would have gotten, I, I have no idea. When I heard on the on the news, they said he had gotten out and came in and tried to start problems with people. And I don't remember him ever getting out of the car. Um, I remember what, seeing him in the car. Probably wasn't quick enough for him to get out and get no, beat up and then get back would, in. No, he would have. No, why would you do that? Um, but he was he was pinned in the car, um, and that's what I remember. But I mean, you know, everybody's focus was was on, you know, getting Andy taken care of that time. I mean, performing CPR on him and making sure that he was okay. And then, I mean, the paramedics got there. I mean, I remember the one paramedic coming in and when they seen the patrons taking care of him and doing CPR, they, they kind of, it, it was kind of shocking to see. It was, um, it was just sad because, I mean, here's this you know, this young kid that had played sports in Loveland all of his life, and by a freak accident, here he is now with two broken legs. And, and you could tell, you know, that looking at him, that it wasn't good. So it was just sad. 